Thunder, 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 thunder geeks are live. Hello, Thunderians. You're listening to Thunder Geeks brought to you by 102.7 FM C I L U or around the world at LU Radio.ca or streaming live at Facebook.com slash Thunder Geeks Speak. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. I'm Kyle. And I'm Chris. And Warrior Thunder Geeks. Thunder Geeks. Welcome again to another very special episode. Of course, if this is your first time tuning in, hi, we're your Thunder Geeks. Each week, we like to get together, talk about the nerdy stuff we've been up to this week, what's going on in our community, and just try to make you laugh for an hour and a half. So, uh, we're, we're gonna, I think we're gonna get some deep in on Disney here, because, ooh, ooh. Uh, everyone's Ooh. freaking out about like uh, the all of the Marvel and Star Wars things that are announced, but like Disney did their huge Disney dump, which is not something they've done before. Like they usually have like a giant event like D twenty three, but this was apparently just doing investors call. We're like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna go. <clears throat> Here's the next ten years of our plans on Disney Plus. Please pay for it now and maybe. Uh. It's hard to even know where to start because, like, they, they announced like 20 things for both like Star Wars and Marvel. And I mean, I'm like, sure. Okay. Some of this stuff I'm excited for. Some of the stuff I'm like, I guess you could do that. I, I don't mind. <laughs> I'm excited like, for uh, Ahsoka. Yeah, that's, that, that's nice. Yeah, that seems to be what everyone else is saying too. Like, they're really excited for the Ahsoka. Uh,. I'm going to depend on who who's going to be actually running the show. If they if that's what they give to Dave Filoni, they're just going to let him do a live action Ahsoka show. I'm 110 percent in because the like last decade of Star Wars, what Dave Filoni has been doing through the animated series is building this entire meta story around the story of Star Wars, but dealing with the thing that George Lucas wanted to deal with the politics of it, but which is hard to do within just the set of the movies. And through, like, I talked about it the other week, through Ahsoka, it actually gives context to a lot of things within the Star Wars universe, is like the start of the Rebellion, or just fixes context as within the fall of Anakin. So having her have her own show, I'm curious to see where it's going to be set. Is it going to be spinning off directly from The Mandalorian? Or is it going to be, like, just the time in between? Because there's so much missing parts of Ahsoka's story still. And there's the thing too, like of like with how successful the Mandalorian is, they're obviously like seeing like, oh wow, this is what people want. I mean, Disney is always a powerhouse. There's all they're always pumping out stuff, but now they like know exactly what the people want, and it feels like they're actually going to give it to us, which is really nice. People want good storytelling. That's why Mandalorian is more popular than the new sequel trilogy because it's a good story. I am worried about putting so many wheels in motion because one of the th one of the problems of their sequel trilogy, though, became that they didn't have a story thought out. They're like, ah, we'll just make it up as we go. We we <laughs> won't really know what we're going to do for the next movie until we see the box office receipts of this movie. There was no overarching plan. And that was one of the things where Ma The Mandalorian succeeds as a series. And I think Star Wars can succeed more as series is. There's still ones that I'm not sure that I'm going to care about. Uh, mostly, Rangers of the New Republic, they're thinking it's going to be a spinoff for Cara Dune, where I, I don't... Maybe? Depending on what... I, I'm not sure I care about that one yet. I get, like, a half an hour episode, like, every week of just thick Cara running around <laughs> the screen. I am sold. Okay, so for yeah, so for you, I mean that, that it's different. You're like, I'm, I, you're, and that's the thing where that Disney's doing as well. It's like, okay, but the thing is, is that we're not doing everything for all Star Wars fans. There are so many different types of Star Wars fans. The way to try to you know appeal to them is to give them certain things. And, and Megan's is like, I want thick cartoon. <laughs> so we don't know that that's her series yet, but that's what we're thinking it might be. I mean, so, that would just be a series that I would be invested in. I would I would pay money for that just all the I mean, time. that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is, because I've got the dyslexia, uh, when I saw the new lineup, 
I'm not going to lie. When I saw the Bad Batch, I misread it as Bad Bitch. And I'm like, Obi-Wan <laughs> series is going to be saucy. <laughs> you and McGregor could pull that off like 100% oh, so yeah. well. He Bad, Batch I'm ex- Bad Batch I'm excited for. Because one thing that uh, the Clone Wars series did that the like movies never could is they humanize the clones. You actually care about the clones be, uh, within that series as you see them more because you get to see the slight variations within them because even though they're all the same person, they're never all the same person. I can never remember the voice actor's name, but the guy who does all the clones, he should get an award because even though it's all the same voice, he gives each and every one its own unique character inflections yes. that you can tell character from character. I, I entirely agree on that one. He definitely deserves way more appreciation than he probably gets. And the Schizophrenia Award goes to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but w- the Bad Batch, what that one is, is uh, there was a story uh, that they had near the end of the series where they started dealing with the inhibitor chip that sets off Order 66 to kill the Jedi malfunctioned in one clone and they end up calling in the specialist force and these are clones that mutated in ways that were beneficial so you'd have one that was like super smart and one that is just an amazing sharpshooter then you have uh one that's super strong and then you have literally rambo are you telling me that there's a (laughs) clone trooper out there that never misses yes pretty much yeah Oh, that's a that's a threat. That is a threat. Also, I'm totally 100% down for Rambo Clone Trooper. The one that I might care about when we know who it's starring, because I think that's going to really depend on if I'm in or not. I want to be excited for Lando. I'm not yet, but if it is Donald Glover, I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? I could watch a series of Donald Glover in space. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> Also considering in the uh, solo solo movie, yeah, <laughs> uh, he was he was one of the best parts, and him hitting on a robot was kind of funny. And that's probably what's changing my excitement for it is because Solo was it was like that was a movie, was it a Star Wars movie? That was definitely a movie. I have seen this movie structure before. It's like this grand heist movie. Didn't feel like Star Wars. despite it being the story of han solo and stuff just a a lot of the things didn't feel right even though i didn't hate it i liked this i don't think it was like the best star wars movie but it was worth it to me Andor is a good idea but i don't know how much they can really do but they've shown us before is one of the big bright spots of Disney when they were trying to do like, hey, we're going to do a bunch of movies. We're going to do one every year. One will be a number. One will be an offset. And I think part of the problem became is they had so many, so much production and motion, they lost sight of the overarching story of Star Wars. Uh, Andor. Andor is going to be a prequel to... Oh, I forgot the name of it now. <laughs> uh, it's the one... No, it's the one that takes place directly before 4. Uh, Rogue One? Uh, Rogue One, thank you. So Andor is a sequel. Uh Andor is a prequel. So Andor is a prequel to Rogue One. And the thing is, I'm like, it might be good, but the thing is with Rogue One, it's like it's a prequel to four directly. It leads directly into the movie, and it ended up being a fantastic movie. Maybe that can work again doing the prequel to a prequel. It's the prequel to a prequel, which is a sequel to a sequel to a sequel, which is a prequel to a prequel to a prequel. I hate that. Everything I just said is canonically correct <laughs> in the order of Star Wars. I think it's okay that they like do different like prequels and stuff that fill in gaps or like different viewpoints from different characters. I think that's okay. Uh, for me, I'm just hoping they have a better... Because part of the reason, and everyone wants to do the Marvel Universe... Like, it is so profitable, and it's so interconnected, and they have all of these different plates spinning, and rarely do they make a huge misstep. That was part of the issue with it just Star Wars within making a movie every year, is that they 
lost sight of just trying to keep a consistent universe because they were so concerned about getting all these little tidbits in there instead of having a story that plays out. And it's why the Mandalorian works because the story is coming first and it's just a story, a very small story, very focused on a few characters and seeing their arc through a universe. And that's where like the original trilogy really succeeded and the prequels kind of failed and the sequels just everywhere. It's like, yeah, we don't like, we want all this content, but we don't want the people making it to lose their vision just because again, it'll make them money. Right. Yeah. Like and the Mandalorian feels like a unified vision of a story and it's an old Western sort of lone wolf and cub story. And that's, what gets us invested and doing that with star Wars in different ways, but I think can work is just taking different takes on genres, but setting them within the universe of star Wars, but being less concerned about we're going to fill in and, uh, you know, we're so concerned about making twists that they start to not make sense. But that's also why the thing, the, the one that I'm probably most excited for that I, I don't, I think it's going to be under people's radar until it comes out is acolyte. Because Acolyte is the most free to do anything it wants. Because it's the one that's going to be set in the High Republic era, which hasn't really been touched by Star Wars. It's just one of those things that we hear about within passing, within compendium books. But they haven't really tackled this era. So it's between the Old Republic and the end of the Republic. So it's this whole uh, peak era of when the Republic was functioning as it envisioned or at least theoretically and the jedi were at kind of the height of their majesty hmm. sounds cool i'm more excited so it might just be me of just the stuff that disney actually announced for themselves and it's mostly just one I i'm still trying to see more details but uh it might be a hybrid animated live action i'm not sure but they're re uh, they're rebooting Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Chip and Dale, Andy Samberg, and um, I I'm gonna be a total dork here, but if you've been watching Ducktales, they've actually been leading up to it in like the way background because they I think in season two they invent a gun that makes you either super smart or super dumb, and their first test subject is gadget. <laughs> I've missed that. It's in the background. They're never talking about or referencing it, but they're there. You see Zipper. You see Gadget Build, a rock, a, the plane out of the stuff. She's there. She's got Zipper. She's got, just got to meet the others. That is fantastic. The Disney Afternoon like took a lot of Disney properties and just made different sort of adventure stories with it. And that was, you know, why it sort of worked even if it didn't really make sense for the characters they just took like okay we have chip and dale they're just you know two little chipmunks that speak in high voices and make mischief uh we're gonna turn them into magnum pi and indiana jones <laughs> and it becomes a lot of fun and i'm curious to see so it's not just andy samberg it's john mulaney and andy samberg yeah giving them a show together so i'm like oh oh i i'm so in for this yeah I'm and John Mulaney. but i i told you i told you all my favorite aspect of it when it got announced is actually not the show it's the russian cult that's centered around gadget hack wrench kuba cola <laughs> i am dead serious it's the craziest thing but what they essentially believe is that all universes are real and you can will things into the universe if enough people believe so if they gain enough followers they will be able to manifest gadget hack wrench into our world <laughs> and they hold rituals and they have meetings and uh th there's been like random videos and pictures that kind of leak out onto the internet of just large groups of people with you know uh, signs and cardboard cutouts of Gadget Hack Wrench. <laughs> so, you you guys know how you poke fun at me and say I'm a furry? Yes. I'm not nowhere near that. I am not part of a cult. Except for Wait, Kyle's well, hold on. We don't know if they're sexualizing them. 
they she they could be idolizing gadget, which is which is different. Yeah, right? I, I don't. Be, I know. I I need to look deeper into the layers of the cult because I'm sure if I look deep enough, it's rule thirty four, Kyle. It well, might yeah, not be the entire There's... cult, but also the cult of ha- uh, gadget hack wrench has three sects. So they have like traditional, reformed, and apocalyptic. Andrew, Andrew. Because <laughs> as, as every religion, as every true religion, as the cult of gadget hack wrench or hack wrenchians, uh, you know, is is that you know there's definitely there's you eventually there's a schism in the theology of their belief system, and that's where you see the the separation between the sects. So you have ones, they have the original text, and you have, you know, the Reformed, who are more casual, and then you have the Apocalyptic, which are kind of your doomsday ones that are this conversation predicting. is making me happy. Is, is maybe, it? I mean, we don't know, maybe Gadget Hackwrench is the bringer of doom. Is any... Yeah, because if they be open a portal... Pre- if they open a portal and they're able to summon Hackwrench, what else is going to come through that portal, right? There's your doomsday. Other chipmunks? <laughs> well, Gadget Hackwrench is a mouse. We don't know. I don't think we're going to get Chip and Dale into our universe, Kyle. I'm sorry. We're not going to get Andy Samberg and John Mulaney, Chip and Dale to transport into us unless we follow the religion of Gadget Hackwrench because it's all based upon if we believe hard enough... So you just have um, sort of like a, a spinoff of their religion where you can start a religion based around Chip and Dale to manifest them into our universe and channel your power through the cult of Gadget Hack Wrench. We don't like And then you'll the have word. Russian Orthodox and Hack Wrenchian, and then you'll have Chip Dalian Reformed Hack Wrenchian. I hate this. <laughs> Says the cult leader. Kyle, if you want to start a cult, you also have to factor in the eventualities of religion. You're going to have a schism in your cult because eventually the leader passes on. So, I mean, like Nuh-uh. when you are 900 years old and you eventually ascend into godhood as your believers, you're going to have to leave people, uh, someone in charge upon Earth. And eventually within within the lineage, there will be a schism where they dispute who is the true leader of that religion wait, wait. and you need to account for that for the future for your lineage so you need to make sure you impose just your ideas throughout it beyond just the cult of personality and that's how we expand hack wrenchium into being more than just a russian cult but a full-blown belief system well how about like if um if enough people can will gadget into existence right Yes. So if enough people focusing could probably achieve other things. May yeah, have that's what, rebirth. Yes. So if I have my cha- followers channel enough, Bobby, and I'm 900, and I like hit the ground, I just rise again as like 899, and then they have to do it every year until I'm like 20 again. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That all they would have to do it twice a year back because if you're doing it every year you would you would age a year and then go back so you would be more of a groundhog dig that would perpetually bring you back to 99 but that else could be part of the story of the religious struggles to achieve two years with one ceremony no exactly see once you, you first have to prove the miracle and then you can expand upon the miracle <laughs> Okay, okay. I, i'm just saying these are the important questions when disney announces stuff is how can we expand Make a cult how can how can we expand a cult <laughs> for the rescue rangers yes so totally just catch it why just oh, no. gadget? they love we gadget. gotta we got they love gadget but we gotta include the other ones when you said gadget i was like <laughs> what does inspector gadget have to do with this oh my gosh <laughs> It's like what? <clears throat> How'd we get here? I'm gonna be curious of who they cast for the other characters, though, because you're right. Because there's not just Chip and Dale. So we have Gadget, Gadget Hack Wrench is coming, and then there's Monterey, and then there's the B, which I it was the one Zipper. they hope they change. Zipper. Yes, and he is in Ducktales, flying around with gadgets. They don't oh. talk yet. Oh, but they're there. 
I think it's because they haven't actually cast anyone. I you're gonna have to oh, Rob. I, I just I just binge Duck Dips. So I'm like, oh, apparently they're doing Dark Wing Duck. I guess I'll jump back into it because I fell out for a while. And I'm going to see how it goes. And now I have to watch it again. Now specifically looking in the background details. Because this was my favorite part of the Disney afternoon. Uh, sure, they had like Goof Troop. They had the weirdest one was Tailspin. Where they took characters from the Jungle Book. But they put them in planes. <laughs> <laughs> just because. Yep. Just, just it was just something that Disney decided to do. Is we're just going to have some Jungle Book plane shows. Yep. I'll make the uh I'll make the zipper sect of the cults. And I'll make it, you know, it's like super um, environmental related, you know, we got to save the bees cuz if we don't save the bees, we can't summon the ultimate bee, which is zipper. Oh yeah, how's the oh, yeah. cult going, Kyle? Zipper's a housefly. We have to increase Zipper's our a house- what? Yeah. Zipper's a housefly? He's blue. Oh, well. No, there's blue bees. There is a blue belt. There's a blue bee. I forget the exact name of it, but it is actually blue. It is Kyle, a do you like blue bee. bees? Chris, what about you? Blue How do you feel about blue bees? <laughs> blue bees. Hey, Jerry, what do you think about this? <laughs> Jerry's unimpressed. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. disappointed that Jerry, Jerry is not invested in blue bees. I'm, a, I'm in, interested to learn about more blue bees. Megan, tell us about blue bees. <laughs> I don't know the full thing about the blue bees, but if you imagine oh, like oh, a big okay. fat an... honey, like so if I... you imagine like a big fat like uh <laughs> like a hun- like a bumblebee, <laughs> like a big fat blue bee. <laughs> it's I a do bumblebee. Like big blue bees. <laughs> I love me some big blue bees. Like, do the blue bees oh, ever matter? In... Wait, Megan, do, do the blue bees like ever like vary in size, or they're just only massive blue bees? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I can appreciate small blue bees too. Oh, this We're is children. Like two minutes too long. We're just children. <laughs> That's all I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Chris. Chris. Yeah. You, me, and Andrew are all surrounded by toys. Yeah, I, don't think and we I also have Jerry in the part. back. But like, what's your point? <laughs> Yeah, where did Jerry come from? Don't worry about it. I we'll like stuff aminals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five. Though speaking of religion. <laughs> the blue so, religion. No, 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 no. I, I'm talking about br- bringing it back to the Sister Act because Whoopi Goldberg is in to do Sister Act 3. And as much as I'm like, you know what? This shouldn't work. I, those two movies are delightful. It, they make they they make gospel music fun, and I just love wacky nuns for some reason. I oh, you Whoopi know what? Goldberg. I'm gonna say sixty. She can probably still sing. I don't think you just lose your singing stuff. I never said look at Dolly Parton. She's singing. older and she's I doing perfectly fine. <laughs> I believe in Whoopi Goldberg. I, I think that's something that we need right now. It's just Whoopi. Because, I mean, first it was saving the church, and that was saving the kids, so I hope they're saving the world. So I want them to save save the world. I, I want apocalyptic take on Sister Hold on. Act. I want Are you Mad Max Fury Road, Sister Acton to the Lord. <laughs> Three. Are you telling me that the first Sister Act was literally just an idol girl anime, but it was yes. like a live action about nuns? Yes. You know, now that you mention it, Megan, that <laughs> might be exactly why I love Sister Act 3, because they do just save their community and lift themselves up through the power of music and song. You're right, it, Megan. Sister Act 1 and 2 is, in fact, an idol anime because the sequel is, in fact, a school idol anime. Yes. I am sold. Sold. You know what? I, out of all the movies that we watched, um, like, growing up and stuff, um, every time that my family would watch Sister Act, I was just, like, not around. So I always missed out on watching the Sister Act, 
we had it. I could have watched it, and I just kept missing it. Oh, and it's just oh, one of those ones where I've wait. always wanted to watch it, and I just, we'll, I just we'll have never to do, had we'll the chance. We'll have to do an online watch Did party you... for the the beauty of Sister Act because y- you need to you need to understand its majesty. Right? Uh, do you I do like, have like, I do like repetitive Romeo, viewings? Goldberg. I yes. What? I like rep- I like, like repetition. Did you guys hang I, out under the blanket with popcorn and watch Sister Act for the 600th time? This like, didn't your family? No. <laughs> Rob, okay, no. so Rob, so you've seen? Uh, have you seen Sister Act with your family multiple times? <laughs> I guess because uh, it was on TV a lot. So exactly, you've seen it. You've seen it. Have you? Would you say you've seen it more than three times? I've seen the sequel more than three times for Absolutely. some reason. Sister Act 2 was always on TV. I, that's one thing I wanted to point out is Sister Act is one of the few distinguished series along with like Aliens and Terminator 2 where the sequel is 100% better than the original. Because that's <laughs> when you had Whoopi Goldberg and the nuns go to the inner city school kids and they're like, ah, you know what? We don't need to learn math in English. You know what we need to do? Sing about Jesus to save this school. And they save this school... <laughs> By just singing and expressing, you know what would have sucked if you were the one kid in class who had like no rhythm and couldn't sing. Hi. That's me. <laughs> you mean pretty much any one of us? I said and, pretty much. I was like, and I are like much. god level rhythm people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I can't sing. The joke. I definitely See, can't sing. See, Andrew gospel. can dance. Andrew yeah, can dance. dance. Andrew would be the one person like hanging out in the robes lip-sync. and he would just be in the back. He would just be in the back the whole time. And then yeah. all of a sudden the breakdown would come and he would like run out from behind everybody and like do the splits. <laughs> 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 like that's I'm Andrew's role. Drop a Jesus. <laughs> He's like the hype guy. But Let's that, give it up for Jesus! If Sister Act follows the theory of film the third movie, even if the second one is better, because I would even say, like, no, the second one's way, way better, but the third movie, the threequel, the trilogy, is usually the one where it falls off the rails, and that's pretty, you know, likely with the movie with the se- there has been very few movies with sequels that happened 20 years later that have worked. Most of the ones that have done it have followed the, uh, the child story. So that's my actual prediction for what this movie is going to be. I'm going to call it now. It's going to be, you're going to have Whoopi Goldberg and then she's going to have a daughter and then they're going to have to. <laughs> a <rather> daughter. St- <laughs> a daughter. <laughs> but the thing is you can't, um, you can't do children of nuns. And so that's one of the problems here with th- that tackling. So the only Whoopi uh, Goldberg can have. So Whoopi and her daughter are going to have to go back and save the church again. You have like that, adopted children. I don't true. think nuns can adopt children, but I guess they just you know raise more nuns. Yeah, you just like yeah, they could like be more people. Be, an, yeah, they they just become like uh, head nun mothers. teachers. Well, Indoctrinated. Yeah, I'm gonna guess some of the nuns have passed on. Only the youngest. I should check if these actresses are actually still alive or not because yeah, yeah. aren't some of them like eighty? I'm well. I'm guessing Mother Superior is probably passed on because she was like 80 in the Sister Act too. Aw, nuns cannot adopt. I, I, I honestly don't it... know how nunneries work, but I'm pretty sure like it, Me it's like I, have, uh... I know nothing. <clears throat> I know that nuns were were... love Jesus into you, and then you wear a funny hat. I know that there was uh, like back in the day, it was like very prominent where like nuns would help run an orphanage, and if you wanted to continue doing the teachings and everything, you would become a nun. And then um, that's how you would, you know, continue in the nunnery. Otherwise, um, it would be like uh, like a more disciplinary thing where if you were, like, not doing well, you would get sent to the nunnery for a little while to kind of uh, rectify your behavior. And then you could, like, either leave or some people just continue staying there, depending on Me- if they like it or not. You did spark inspiration in me, Megan. Yeah, I think you I think you touched on something there that it might be as well. Is if they actually if they're gonna keep the story grounded, which they likely will because it's sister act. Uh so they they've saved the church, they saved the school. The way you up it for the threequel is they save the orphanage. Yes. <laughs> Soul. Question. Gotta about save that, the though. kids. 
At Same what key. point did they throw the kids at the demons to feed them before going to the giant hole? I think that's we're gonna have to wait till <laughs> Sister Act Five until that happens. <laughs> Sister Act Five, they're just gonna say, "Ah, you know what? We're just gonna go for it." Whoopi Goldberg's gonna be CGI'd like Jeff Bridges in Tron, and we're just gonna have her flipping around, and she's gonna have like a Jesus scream, and it's gonna be like the apocalyptic version of it. I would, oh, I, I would oh, be gunning for oh, that oh, Mad Max oh, style. Oh, go for it, Rob. Sister Act Five, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> 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 Hashtag That's I believe in Whoopi. Sister Act Five, like Ash from the Evil Dead shows up and he's just like, oh gosh, things are bad. <laughs> Groovy. Can Bruce Campbell <laughs> thing? Probably yes. He's probably, I mean, he probably can't sing very well, but he probably does sing. He can Bruce Campbell it sing. Like, he'll, he he'll can sing, Bruce Campbell it. He'll sing very manly. I feel like he has enough confidence that if he if he if he had the mind to if he had a mind mindset on it he could probably do anything. I don't have the heart to tell it. So if Bruce Campbell can't sing, I don't have the heart to tell him. I will tell Bruce <laughs> Campbell you have a magnificent voice and you should be in everything. You can be in a musical. Who cares? You're Bruce Campbell. <laughs> You're Bruce no, Campbell. I, that's just how he's like gotten his acting career. I I remember he was doing a interview when he was asked about the Evil Dead musical. And two things I remember from that interview is the guy who plays Ash in the musical hates Bruce Campbell. Not for any, like, mean reasons, but he's like, oh, you only had to cut off your hand once. I've had to do it two times a day, every day, the rest of my life. <laughs> and Bruce Campbell openly says, I can't carry a tune. This guy's awesome. They actually announced an Evil Dead video game, which is coming around, which I'm pretty stoked yep. for, not gonna lie. I might not have gonna to, lie. Might have to kick open Chris's door with a copy of the game and be like, "We play this now." Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, yes. It, the world sucks. Is it gonna no. be Bruce voicing Ash in the video game? He was like talking it up a, a while back, so I'm assuming it is going to be him doing Fantastic. the voice. I would. I would hope so. I would really, really hope so. I can see. I don't have doing super doing high hopes thing. for it, but I'll buy it for just the 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 camp of it. Or just for the because. I mean, what in the Evil Dead franchise has ever been not good? That is totally fair. The reboot spinoff? Actually, it was really good. No, oh, I mean, no, like, it... the one in reboot. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> actually what got... that's actually what got me into the Evil Dead franchise, so I can't complain about it because it was the door that opened me to the beauty of Bruce Campbell. And low key for me as well, Rob. Did you did you have this as well when they announced the Evil Dead video game? Immediately, I thought of you know I've wanted to since that episode of Reboot because that's how I discovered Evil Dead was because of that episode. I that was oh. the episode uh, right after Bob left too as well. Yup. We dealt with our trauma of having Bob ejected into the web through Evil Dead. Thanks, mainframe. I know you didn't intend that, but wow. <laughs> I just remember I just remember like I was watching that episode. My sister comes in the room and says, Oh, they're making fun of Evil Dead. What's Evil Dead? One trip to the video store later and all three copies, because the video store near our house was three dollars, three movies, three days. So of course, getting all three, watching them over the weekend, I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> 25 years later, I still watch that franchise on a regular basis. Something that I'm happy as well is when Disney bought Fox, Disney could have just ignored all of the properties that they had just bought because that does happen a lot of times when companies are acquired is they focus on just the couple of super profitable ones and they forget like the plethora of what the, like what made that company profitable before. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was never super into Ice Age, but they're continuing to do that. But they also gave Sunny four more seasons, and that makes me really, really happy. Uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yes, I'm glad to hear that. I'm actually surprised that they're giving them more, considering what Sunny and Always Sunny in Philadelphia is like dealing with a lot of the time. More Danny DeVito. That's what life demands. Uh, for, for me, like uh, uh, the show is just consistently funny funny it's hilarious just, it's, 
it's just funny. I haven't like ever. It makes me laugh, and I, I, I'm they, happy Disney's like, hey, you know what? You guys are just super successful, so we're not just gonna go season for seasons. Like, how how about four? You guys, you guys got four more in yet? Like, ah, we got four more in yet, and we'll we'll see how we go from there. There has to be an episode in one of the new seasons called "The Gang Gets COVID." Uh, no, there has oh, to be. No. Oh. <laughs> so I was watching trailers because you know that's what I do, and I found a trailer for a movie called Songbird. It's COVID twenty three the movie. Oh my gosh! Oh, I. I what's here's it? the thing? Okay, so wh- uh, how? Okay, so uh, uh, COVID mutates, and they have to like l- like lock down to an extreme level where the few people who are immune pretty much have to do running between everyone for every business. They're pretty much like DoorDash on steroids. Oh. And... So it's like Death Stranding. (laughs) So it's kind of like a DoorDash like apocalyptic scenario? Uh, And every morning when you wake up, you have to do a facial (laughs) scan and like takes your temperature and all that and if they say you got it, they take you to a camp. (laughs) <laughs> yikes and the guy who runs the camp oh no is... don't like conspiracy theorists find it they'll think that it's you know and the guy who, who runs these camps is, and I can't remember the actor's name I know it's one of the scars guards the older crazy one who was in the video game we played he was the bad guy in John Wick um you're, you're most familiar with the scars guardians Megan. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. In that one video game we played, which one do you mean? Until Dawn. That's Peter Oh, Stormare. no. That's oh, Peter, Stormare. Peter Stormare. He's not a Scarsguard. But, He's not um, even a I mean, Scarsguardian. That's a Stormarian. Uh, that's I a bet. Stormarian. Sorry. No, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. He's a great actor. I love him. Yeah. He's scary, He's... man. Yeah, he's the bad guy. But there's one thing I saw in the trailer that kind of made me go... Oh, this is going to be a bad movie, even though they make it look good. Produced by Michael Bay. Ah, oh, yes! Okay, no, okay, so here's what it's going to be. It's like, it's not going to be a movie you go to see the story. We're just going to see a lot of things explode, and you know what you're getting when you go to a Michael Bay movie. Like, you can't really, I can't complain about it, because I'm like, man, those are great explosions. What can I say? Honestly, I'm like, I'm not saying it's intelligent, but it's oh, kind of awesome. If Peter <laughs> Stormare is in anything, I, I will pay money to see that man act crazy. But here's the thing you gotta think about. Most movies take between a year and 18 months to from beginning to end. The movie's already done now. Oh, How because Michael Bay has all a lot of money. We already had we already had like COVID zombies. But see, those are like one. low budget kind of movies. This is uh an actual studio, an actual good team. Well, okay, you just said Michael Bay. I say good with air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are people who are paid to do this and don't just do it because they want to. So, I'm kind of curious how it's going to look. Because here's the thing, um. For the most part, every scene where you see a character, there is no one else sharing a scene with them. Most of the conversations are between our main female lead, uh, who is, you know, stuck in her apartment because of the virus, and our main male lead, who is a person who's immune, who does the bike running, and they're talking over the phone. You see see Pierre Stormare find out the girl might be infected, and you see him, like, outside the door through, like, the keyhole, the pinhole point of view. And he's just being all kooky and crazy. <laughs> Honestly, this is a really interesting way to do filmmaking, considering everyone is kind of like trying to social distance. I think it. I think it could work. If it's on Netflix, I'll watch it, but I might not probably give it money. It's going to be like the fourth in my queue. <laughs> yeah. All right, Andrew. All right. Speaking of trailers. Yeah. We had the Game Awards. Yeah, we did. We had trailers. We had a trailers. Lot. We have a lot. Did of you trailers. see Vin Diesel though? Did you see Vin Diesel? Hey guys, they got Vin Diesel. Did you guys see Vin Diesel? No, he's in Ark. Uh, he's in Ark Two. So he's in Ark he, Two, and they got Vin Diesel, and he's in the he's in the game. Did you see Vin Diesel though? Um, he's there, and he's in the game. He's is Vin, uh, Vin Diesel, Diesel developing the game. 
<laughs> no, but he's did in that... it. Did you oh. see that they got oh, Vin I... Diesel? I don't I'm sorry, but the trailer for Ark Survival 2 was literally just like a constant shots of Vin Diesel's face being like, Hey, look, we got Vin Diesel. Hey, check it out. Do you know where they got it from? Have you seen the game Cyberpunk 2077 and its main character Keanu Reeves? Hey guys, did you see we got Keanu Reeves? Hey look, guys, you're breathtaking. I'd be excited. Okay, I'd be more excited though, not just having Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel had a game studio for a while, and they actually made some pretty great games. Facts. Okay, so I have I have a list we're going to go through. Okay. okay. Okay, okay. so we have the new Super Smash Brothers character. Whoa! Oh my gosh, Sephir- I was screaming Sephiroth. at the TV. Who killed Mario? Screaming. No, he oh, didn't. Screaming at the TV. So, you know did, the scene did where... They um... Did they do it through the back? They did the air scene where they like held him up through the. <laughs> but they hold. But he didn't stab Mario. He just like sl- like holds him through his like uh, his oh, overall gross. straps. I'm it's so it. good. You know who doesn't sound fair? The guy with the ten foot lightning fast sword. <laughs> <laughs> I guess mean, he can have some meteors. Control. Can summon meteors. It's can fine. Turn to his final yeah. form. You know what I didn't think was fair? The character who could build a stage on the stage, but here we are with Minecraft Steve. <laughs> and Alex. <laughs> and a zombie. And Enderman. I will still annoy all of you with Rob until I make every single person turn to me and yell, Damn it, Rob, stop! But then I just have to put down the blocks. You just throw some dirt down and then that's it. We'll see. Walk away. I'll make I'll make you rage at me. You block away. So, so Andrew, we have. Oh, by the way, it's the year twenty twenty. Uh, we have the trailer for the game Perfect Dark. Oh. Yes, <laughs> they're bringing they're bringing her back. Uh, it's Xbox. It's on is Xbox. It rare? Uh, rare is owned by Xbox. probably not. Rare is owned by Xbox. Isn't it? I know yeah. Rare is owned by Xbox, but like. They kind of forgot about them for a while as they were just designing their uh, rip off of the Miis that no one cared about after a month. <laughs> <laughs> Rare did that for a while. From from Perfect Dark, we have the, what, four second trailer for Mass Effect, which was the most important thing of this whole event. <laughs> it showed someone walking for three steps and everybody was like, guys... This is it, Mass Effect. I don't care about the rest of the game awards. I was like, what? You didn't even get anything. It just said my Mass Effect is coming back. I don't care about this one. It said Mass Effect will continue. And will it's like, continue? oh, wow. There, oh, there we go, guys. You're going to get it. Eventually. I saw like 10 people posts and like tagging each other, like this big circle jerk of people who were like, ah, Mass Effect. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, we have the one that you might be interested in, Andrew. Yes. Back for Blood. Oh so, yeah, Back for Blood. Back for Blood is made from the people who made Left 4 Dead. Um, I don't know, because Evolve sucked. Do you like 20 foot tall zombies? I do. There are 20 foot tall zombies. Okay, is it just Mr. a zombie X just game, shows or up? is it something that's more, like, is it a cooperative game? Because that's been the I think, I think it's just a zombie thing again. Um, well, I mean, like, like, is it first person? Is it multiplayer? Like, what? what's the setup of it? Did it show? Or is uh, it just... I think there was a gameplay trailer. I didn't see much of it, though. Okay, I'll, I'll have to look more into it, because that's, uh, that's Turtle Rock. And yeah. I loved Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, but I loved it because of the gameplay mechanic and how they had to cooperate you could still play Left 4 Dead with other people if they didn't have a headset, but you wanted people with the headset. Um, part of the split problem with screen. Evolve and split screen. Evolve came out so early, most people didn't have headsets for Xbox, and it was a game that required a lot of cooperation and a lot of nuanced cooperation. And it ended up not working because Left 4 Dead worked because you can just pick up and go. It wasn't that complicated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So from there we have Vin Diesel. I mean Arc Two, <laughs> uh, with a photo of Vin Diesel. You can see with a photo of Vin Diesel. They got Vin Diesel though. You got Vin Did Diesel. you see? 
Did you see Vin Diesel? Vin it's got Vin Diesel in it. Kind of, uh, he's kind of myth to me. He's, he's, it's Vin Diesel. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have the the next Dragon Age one. It's also announced, but nobody cares about that. Apparently. This one I'm excited think... for. Which one is this? The, this is the only game I play. They announced the new map for Among Us. <laughs> oh, the Henry the Stickman game is one? Fun. The the airship? Yeah, it's Henry yeah. Stickman. I don't, I don't know what that is. I think a, that the only you... two games that I was really excited at seeing... Well, there was actually three. There was one where it's like a Groundhog Day sort of game. I can't remember the name of it, but it's literally like... It looks like uh, how Control plays, but it's in space. So it's like you shoot stuff constantly, and if you die, you have to restart. It's like Rogue style. And then there was, End of course, the dungeon? most we uh, no, not Endless Dungeon. It, this one is um, a third-person shooter, and uh, I can't remember what it's called for the life of me. But the other game that I was interested in was called Scarlet Nexus. Now this is the most weavy oh, thing I've ever seen in my life. That's literally what I said to the chat. I was like, dude, there's a trailer <laughs> playing right now that is the weaviest thing I've ever seen. Okay, but it looks I good. They got it. that it Funimation. Looks... They got that Funimation Studio voice acting money. The Earl Cigarettes made a song for it. I know it's edgy, but it looks cool. Okay, exactly. Megan, I want a bunch so of edgy, red strings me. stuck in the back of my head. I always choose Matrix Head Jack. Exactly. Megan. Yes. You really gonna sit there and tell me that you didn't think about Evil West? I love the idea of Evil West. I saw it and I was watching the trailer, but it's all sick. Dark I'm like fantasies, an... Red Dead Redemption too. <laughs> Like if it's a top-down shooter sort of style, like strategic gameplay, though, I'm totally out. If it's a third-person shooter, I am so, so in. But right now, from the trailer, I don't know a whole lot about it, so I'm just going to kind of, like, put it to the side and, like, kind of admire it for the time being, because this is exactly what happened with Mutant Year Zero. Right, <clears throat> okay, uh, Chris? See? Did you play Fall Guys at all during Season 2? No. Okay, so the new season starts in two days. Nice. Yeah. This has got seven more levels. Great, you're going to see like two of them. I saw like none of the other ones, so I don't really care. This see, is Fall Guys is fantastic. <sighs> Sorry, Fall Guys is fantastic because you can't even be... You can't game or rage and quit at that game. Like, yes. it's too cute. <laughs> you oh, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. If, you, yeah, you, if can. you are rage quitting at this game, you should just quit gaming. Get out of here. No, you can... You can 100% rage quit at that little fight, buddy. fight, fight me, fight me instead. Come on down, okay. to the to my place and fight me, man. All right, all right, Andrew. This is this is my favorite announcement. World of Warcraft. So we have the trailer for Master Chief coming to Fortnite, which also involves The Walking Dead, Red versus Blue, and by the way, don't forget Ninja. Ninja's also here, and he's in Blood Gulch, which is available now if you want to play alongside the Mandalorian, which you can now collect Beskar steel plates to <laughs> upgrade your armor as the Mandalorian, or go back and play as any of... Oh, by the way, we beat Galactus by driving battle buses into it. Does that happen? I'm what Excuse me, I'm sorry, but in, do you know what Fortnite does not have? Do you know what they don't have? They don't have Vin Diesel, okay? Did you <laughs> see Vin Diesel? Kratos. They have Kratos. <laughs> they have Kratos. <laughs> they have Kratos. <laughs> but they don't have Vin Diesel. They do have Groot. Which is Vin Diesel. Oh, Groot. okay, never mind. Never mind. They got, they got, they got Vin Diesel, though. I they, just... They got everything. We're gonna watch an episode like a trailer for Fortnite, and we're gonna see a Thunder Geeks logo in the background and be like, What? Hey, we're in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like my going theory that Fortnite is just Tommy Westfall getting kind of violent. Well, this is like... <laughs> it's just everything now. I mean, I mean, it's like Lego. Fortnite is just Lego now. <laughs> they went They went from everything the, like, get, Everything gets to be Lego. Everything gets to be Fortnite. Okay. We'll have Fortnite DC soon. Andrew, Andrew. So, so that already too. I don't know if you, if you saw it, but like... <laughs> The Galactus yeah. event is where he, Galactus shows up and starts sucking the zero point from Fortnite, which, by the way, is Fortnite universe energy. So as he's doing this, Iron Man shows up. Holy crap. 
and you get to fly a jetpack, and then eventually a battle bus, and then the, the, the battle bus, Galactus eats the battle bus, is, is you and three million other people are riding the trails. Thor's there, Thor's there, by the way. Do you like Thor? So after this happens, Galactus oh, just disappears. All of the Marvel people stop caring, and now we have the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we go back to when? Can we go back to when Fortnite was just um, Jonesy <laughs> oh, sitting no, on a no, uh, deserted no, island want... eating a banana? Yeah, and then no. the banana turned out to be like his best friend or something. <laughs> Beely, can we just go back to that instead? No, Megan, oh. we have to have Jonesy waking up and gathering the greatest hunters from around existence to come defend the zero point once again. Something. The seven, I, I think it's called. <laughs> There's seven hunters in Fortnite which are coming to destroy. I actually learned a tidbit of information that I thought would be interesting for Kyle to know. Um, apparently, oh, no. there's a metal, there's a person, in, there's a prominent person in the metal community that is so into World of Warcraft that it sickens me. This person is known as Corpse Grinder, the lead singer of Cannibal Corpse. Oh yeah. They okay. have a horde Corpse. tattoo, the same tattoo as you. They have yeah. the same tattoo. No, Kyle has a halo. Yeah. And I was like, I did this. not know any of this. <laughs> Hey, Megan. So I've seen Cannibal Corpse when they come to the Black Pirates. Oh, nice. Yeah. And did you talk uh, to we, did you talk to Corpse just, Grinder about the horde and we, how they're we've amazing? Seen each other, we've seen each other in our horde tattoos. <laughs> I hate you so much. I just want to circle back on corpses because I'm sorry I doubted anything. Kyle, Back for the Blood is essentially Left 4 Dead 3, so I, I'm it so is. excited. I'm, it is! You know, it's, it's literally just Left 4 Dead! Yeah, no, they they, they 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 kind of allude to it. It's like it's Left 4 Dead three. We just have to technically change the copyrights of the the things, but it's going to be yeah. playing the same where it's a multiplayer cooperative campaign story, and then you just done. are going to switch sides for the multiplayer, which is what made it fun. I'm oh hell yeah, I'm in. Uh, I can't. Well, we had the Evil West space one, and we had Fortnite. Bunch of crap nobody cares about. Oh, uh, the <laughs> Swedish chef is coming to Overcooked. <laughs> what Overcooked? That's a, uh, it's a game, game where you make. Yes, yeah, a game where you make food. It's like Hell's Kitchen, the game. Oh, I've only seen the cooking simulator game. <laughs> hey, Andrew, you want to know why the Game Awards sucks? Uh the Game Awards sucks every year, Kyle. Nobody likes Jeff Keighley. Wait, no, I tried so hard to get that Jeff Keighley Among Us mask that was available for 30 minutes so that I could be Jeff Keighley every time I play Among Us. You know every why they would only make it available for 30 minutes? Because only you people imagine who want to make people on. mad at them will, for, will play Among Us with <laughs> Jeff Keighley. One second, okay. So do you, do you know why Jeff Keighley made the Game Awards? Basically, so Jeff Keighley made... Doritos. Yeah. yeah, Jeff Keighley basically made the Game Awards so he could possibly hang out with Hideo Kojima. And now, Hideo Kojima is banned from the Game Awards, and ever since then, and ever since then, Jeff Keighley has been so depressed. Every year he does this, you could just see the life leaving his body every single year more and more, because he can't hang out with Hideo Kojima. Do you know why Hideo Kojima got banned from the Game Awards, though? It's because Hideo Kojima uh, is a Dr. Pepper man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, as I was going to say, there are two things that came out of this that mattered. Here comes the One, salt, here comes the salt, the salt. Oh, Megan knows. Prepare your... Megan knows. Prepare. So, prepare. we have Valkyrie winning Content Creator of the Year, which was great. Yeah, I have no idea who the other four people were except for Tim the Tap Man, but that was only because Among Us was pop- or not Among Us. Fall Guys. Fall Guys was popular for like a hot minute. A month. During the a voting period. It was great. Uh, secondly, uh, The Last of Us 2 uh, is not Game of the Year. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. It paid the most money, Kyle. It it paid the most money, but it, that's like, how you every... become game of the year. It's just make the most money so you can I pay scroll... the most money. I so now they can release the game of the year edition, 
and tr- they're it, it's like the special editions for Star Wars. <laughs> the dog turned on PS3. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to stop that. <laughs> Kratos wants to play so, PS3. I see his Among Us yeah. in the back. <laughs> the, the likes, yeah, it was Among Us. So, the, like, the the streams that I was watching, like, I was watching Critical. I had his open. I had the Game Awards open because I wanted that Jeff Keighley mask. Of course, you wanted it. And uh, it won, and all you see is through, like, Charlie, Charlie's chat, all of the chat in the Game Awards was just anger. <laughs> So everybody was like, this did not deserve... It deserved things like audio. Audio was phenomenal. It had some good acting. It had yeah. some great acting. But you know what it was? The same game from 10 years ago. <laughs> so why is it winning the award now? Same game from 10 years ago. I would have given it to like Ghost of Shishimi. Ghost of Shishimi was great. I wanted Hades to win because it was an indie game. And I wanted, and that would have been great. And Hades anything, is a great game. Anything else, just not Last of Us Two. Last of Us Two. Hey Kyle, can you name a game, uh, game awards where you've been satisfied with who won? Nineteen ninety three. He was too young to remember. No, they didn't have a game award. <laughs> Hold on, I think it, it started with last Spike year TV, when God of it? War won Game of the Year. That was twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. There you go. Game but there's the more than just the, yeah, there's more than just the game of the year because sometimes game the, of the, the game year. of the year. But then there's other, usually like five other categories where you're like, what? No. But uh, that studio paid more money, so. Okay, so like Sekiro, yeah, I can see it. It, I don't think it should have won, but it did. God of War is one of the greatest games that has ever been created on planet Earth, so of course that was able to win. <laughs> Halo. <laughs> There's nothing wrong ever in that entire franchise. Uh, we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Andrew, how's that going? I, I never finished it, but I'll admit it was a phenomenal game. Fantastic game. I've also never going to finish it. Uh, we have Overwatch. Uh, I guess. You're a Blizzard boy. You, yeah. you know what? Yeah. When, when Overwatch came out, it was... It was, it was great. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, we have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which I agree is one of the greatest games ever created. Yep. And Dragon Age Inquisition, which also was a great game. And then we have The Last of Us 2, which was not a great game. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't even a good game. It was a game. Well, it's like one of these things. Not like the other... One okay, one just makes me game of the year, best game direction, best narrative, uh, audio design, and Abby won best performance, even though I'm pretty sure everybody hated her. Yep. Uh, innovation and acceptability, best action adventure game. Hey, best debut game is one you enjoy. Phasmophobia. You know, like some of the, I don't even know what tell me why is, but ain't nothing but a heartache. Can we punch him? Tell me why was like a movie basically where um you had to like it's like I think. You have to tell him why. Uh, sorry, I I know what tell me why is, but I can't like really recall it. Among Us won best multiplayer game. That yep. makes sense. Yep. That's all anybody ever plays. It's fun. I still feel bad every time we play with Jamie. <laughs> she dies first every time. <laughs> every single time. No matter which group we're in, just every time. But like, I mean, the thing that most people watch award, the game awards and other gaming related things for is like trailers and stuff like that. And they're they're a good yeah. one. Yeah. And that, that's like, the thing is, is that like the the part about the game awards. So. No one watches the Game Awards for the awards. <laughs> you watch the Game Awards to find <laughs> what's coming for out the in the next few years. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we were watching that through, and I was like, you know what, trailers weren't the worst. But, like, it's nothing... It's no cyberpunk. There's no, like, big cyberpunk. But level. everyone's mad at cyberpunk. That's the only thing that it, I've heard of. They are. Everyone's mad. 
Because it took them eight years to develop a game that doesn't work on PS4 or Xbox One. <laughs> and runs that, your CPU to a even though it was, on PC. Even though it was developed for Xbox One or, and PS4, it doesn't but run it, on it. It works on PC though, right? If you have a good PC. Oh no. Which My, don't you? I I would probably run it at, at like low. I'm running it on Ultra and my CPU is roaring. What what's the <laughs> issue? So like why can't okay. it run so, on anything? It, here's the thing. You can run it on PS4 and stuff like that, right? But the PS5 so, remaster that's inevitable be better. It's available for PS5 too. Does it I work think. on PS5? Yes. Okay, so it just doesn't uh, work on the old console. So here's the thing, though, is it looks like Grand Theft Auto, like, 2. Yeah, it looks really <laughs> bad. It looks like some characters don't have faces that, like, load in. It's just, like, two polygons back-to-back of, like, different shades. And, like, so it looks like it looks like Fallout New Vegas. And then what they promised us was what people do with the mods on computers for Fallout New Vegas. So everyone is like super clean and photoshopped and like super pretty eyes and like they're not like dirty and gross all the time. And then now we get Fallout New Vegas textures on a PlayStation 4 like next gen sort of style game. Like it, it's bad. It's very, very bad. It is not what they promised us. That's for sure. OK, so here's what it, like I watched. A couple of people started streaming. Like Crunch started playing it. Tane was playing it. Critical, all that sort of jazz. I watched Jesse. I think I watched like six different people start this game. Right? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> have you ever Chris played it? You played Deus Ex, right? Yeah. It just looks like Deus Ex. Yeah. No, even it with just, like the arm blades too. It's a shiny Deus Ex. Yeah. A game that's been in a franchise that's been going for like. 20 years <laughs> this game shows up and it just looks like that and everybody's like this is the greatest game that's ever been existed and i'm like want, no, a not. lot of people <laughs> seem to want cyberpunk 27 2077 to be their new religion because the hype for this game was massive probably the biggest i've ever seen for a video game yeah like uh, the, the, the people who were invested in this game were in deep like they they were ready to go johnny mnemonic and start having wet hardware just plugged into their brains so they can turn themselves into <laughs> cyberpunk 2077 uh, i mean if someone I came just, up to me and said you can have arm blades yeah i'm super in arm plates arm blades arm blades oh like you're a very simple blade. man <laughs> okay. yeah. actually you know what, chris Skipple i like the people needs just need some arm blades ching ching on a side note, on like arm blades, I I started Valhalla, of course. Like I, yeah. I, I'm like three hours in or something like that. I don't know, sailing around on boats, singing sea shanties to Norse people. That's, <laughs> all, I, that's all I care about. <laughs> but then they like the, the two assassin guys, the hidden the, ones. the hidden ones have the best scenes I've ever seen in a game. Where number one, the little assassin dude tries to jump the the big Viking guy. I'm not pronouncing their names, by the way, because they're all like super Norse and like Sven. Yeah, no, it's like they slapped a keyboard with like six V's <laughs> in the middle of it and called it a day. We're laughing. And they're, just, like, they're walking around and they're like, "That is a and flurb," and you're like, <laughs> "All right, Vulcan Borgen." All right, so here we go. Um, anyways, so that he guy like jumps out to like stab him. You know, professionally trained assassin that's been doing this for his like entire existence, and this is his only goal is to kill this guy. Jumps out, gets grabbed by the Viking, yeeted super hard into the wall, and the fight continues where we left off. <laughs> there was no he was training. There was no remorse for this young fellow who just got his head cracked against the wall at Mach ten from a six foot twelve Viking. So, so well, it, that, that was funny. Yet. <laughs> and then they like hand you the little the hidden blade thing. Your character just like puts it on like a bracelet, and they're like. It goes under your arm and it goes like, on the bottom. And your character is like, no, you guys lost a finger from putting it on the bottom. I'm going to put it on the top. It looks pretty. <laughs> and the assassin's people, the guy's like, stop. Our religion's not a joke. 
And your character's just like, <laughs> it's a blade. I like to stab people. <laughs> oh, I'm like, this is the best. I love this character already because your character is not a good dude. <laughs> that's that that's a statement kyle that is definitely a statement i like this character because he is Char- not good your character in cyberpunk the worst your character's a massive dink true <laughs> keanu reeves? Before Silverhand. no keanu reeves is like in your head oh so you're not keanu reeves you're no, becoming he, keanu reeves no. he's like implanted you remember the black mirror episode where they like put someone's conscious into somebody else's head Yes. It's yeah, that. so it's like that. You no, know, it's literally just that. It's it's literally that. Where it's the movie upgrade. Almost, except Johnny's just like sitting around. Like you can see him, you can talk to him, you can like interact, but he's not there. Right? I mean, and that that's gonna be tough. If you have Keanu Reeves next to your character the whole time, how how can you ever look like a good person next to Keanu Reeves? Kind of I, I don't know. You could spend twelve hours in the character creator. <laughs> Did you just give yourself a thirteen-inch dong? Oh yeah. So that's the other issue with the game. People what? are having dong issues. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, that was never something that we assumed was going to happen. But I thought Rob headlines. was joking. Uh, can you explain to me the dong issues? Okay, so one of the big features that everybody was excited about was you were able to customize the size of your dong. <laughs> I forgot. You were, to, you were able to make it big, big flopper donger, or you could have like a little pencil wiener. You can continue on with your life. <laughs> so the issue is now is that people's clothing isn't containing said dongs. So as they're walking <laughs> around, they're just like a floppy dong hanging outside of their pants, <laughs> or like for the women, their boobs are hanging out, like sticking through their shirt, like they cut a hole in it. So they're just walking around with like titties flapping in the wind. <laughs> Cyberpunk, don't <laughs> yeah, exactly. As everybody's like, this is the game issues we're having is that the character's dong is like flopping around. I think Andrew <laughs> just found his new favorite bug. I'm waiting for the food mod. Like, here's the, th- like, <laughs> the thing though is like, people were iffy on Twitch. They were like, are we allowed to show this? Like, is this is part of the game, right? Yeah. Is, is, is this cyber- terms of service? Oh, no. Is so like oh, critical had like full dong. He like opened his menu <laughs> and it was just like meh, like a curvature six foot long like flopping monster of a wiener. The Moby <laughs> huge on the man. Legitimately, the man like built himself a Moby huge on his character. And like, <laughs> I just looked over and I'm like, oh, this is not the blog I was expecting inside of, <laughs> of Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Why are you complaining again? Because <laughs> it's been like eight years of delays for a game that's still filled and riddled with bugs. <laughs> so bad. Hey, Kyle, yeah. that doesn't sound like a bug. That sounds like a feature. Like the hang dong. If you're going to give your character <laughs> a six foot dong, it's assumably because you want to see it. <laughs> that's i'm saying no that's a feature that is built in to the if game if you ever want just like to progressively know where the maturity level of like all of the gamers are at that are excited for things they literally like, released a dong slider and that was it the whole game didn't matter from that point on like this was the most hype game that's ever existed you could change the level of your dong. The future is now. You can change and, like, the level of your dong, but you can't change your hairstyle when you're in the game. Like, what's with that? No yeah, haircuts. Apparently there, there, no, there's no haircuts or like Tattoo GTA level 30. Like yeah, there's no tattoo. I you mean, I loaded up. Sold. I, I loaded up Valhalla and got like head to tail tattoos. Because I'm a Viking, of course. Of course. Of, of hit keyboard random letters finger blurgen. Yeah, those are my tattoos. So <laughs> I I just there was just a bunch of stuff I've seen, I've watched a lot of play footage now of like Cyberpunk from people having like high end computers, like these thousands of thousands of dollars worth of machinery. They're like, the game's great. It runs great. 
And then I watched a TikTok of a man who blew up his laptop from loading in Cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> on Ultra. He's like, guys, watch this. And he started clicking everything up to like the highest difficulty or like graphic setting. And you hear his laptop just start clicking. And it's like, and I'm like, run. Oh. <laughs> You're about to blow up your laptop with a video game. Nice. <laughs> You could customize your dong on. You must have made it too big. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, now let's be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. fair. There's no such thing so as too so big. And you can't even like customize. Like I would, I would, I would want more customization because not all dongs are the same shape or yeah, size. Can, can you I pick want your cut or uncut? Yeah, Megan I makes believe a good you point. can. Slider isn't enough. <laughs> you slider is not enough. Curvature so much that it just wraps around your leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, can I choose? Can I choose <laughs> what shape it is? Like, can I choose it to be tapered near the hilt more? Can I choose that it be like banana shaped? Can like, is it just straight and narrow? You know what? Can I choose the angle of the dangle? You know what? Is I've what never... I want to know. Can we I've never thought it? of the hilt on my, <laughs> my dong. <laughs> Sorry? I've never thought of the hilt on my dong. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. On my sword. Okay, okay, okay. Can I choose which 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 way like the, the, the pubic hair grows? Like can I choose it to be like totally straight? Can I choose it to be curly? Like can I have Put a crypt? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, one like testicle always hangs lower there. than the other. Can you decide which testicles to hang lower? Can you make them perfectly balanced? This Can you is, give yourself an extra one? And you just, just go... Listen, write a strongly worded letter to the people who run... Yeah, slider. CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red. We need more options with our dong. <laughs> Every dong is delightful. Facts. I should restart the game. So, Megan, yes. let's get down to business to discuss and Mulan. Mulan, you How were you waiting. Feel about it? Did you think it was fun? <laughs> How long did you work on that, Andrew? Uh, like 20 <laughs> seconds ago when we had to discuss <laughs> I'm going to give myself a C+. <laughs> That was pretty decent. I enjoyed that. I always enjoy when you make up random, like make up lyrics to songs. That's fantastic. Um, you know yeah. What, you, so know, you know what I, I was missing from Mulan? Everything. Oh, songs. All of the everything. Songs. So I, I get what they were doing. I get what they're doing. Uh, go mm -hmm. ahead. I enjoyed the movie. It was, it was. It wasn't like I was like over the moon about it, being like, "Well, this film is amazing. This is the best thing I've seen in decades." But it was a, it was a good film. Like I, en I enjoyed it. They, they started off the movie with Mulan chasing a chicken on the rooftops, and then they ended it the same way. <laughs> I, I guess they did. You know what, Megan? I missed that. I guess they had symbolism <laughs> with Mulan chasing a chicken and then the giant chicken at the end that was just giant there. chicken. Just there the for giant some reason. Chicken. Was it a chicken? Um, okay, or a so it was, it was a chicken. Uh, so Kyle, you've chicken. seen it. Megan's seen it. I've seen Unfortunately. it. Unfortunately. Um, okay, so uh, I'm curious how. Um, Megan, you said before the show that like uh, you hadn't really seen the original Mulan. I've oh, seen the original cool. Mulan. No, I enjoyed the original Mulan. I watched it. I owned it. It was like a movie that I watched on the regular. So it wasn't like I was going into this movie blinded oh, okay, uh, on okay. the fact of how the original movie was. I was just like kind of curious to compare like, because you know, Disney takes a story and then they Disney it and then... Yeah. That's what they do, like, you know? Um, it's the same way with, like, Cinderella. They took the story of Cinderella, they Disneyed it. It was fantastic, but my favorite version of Cinderella isn't the Disney one. It's a random one that I can never remember the company that made it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And How did, you, did you like this one? Like the original Disney Mulan? I did uh, like the original Disney Mulan. Like it was it was good, it was fun, it was, it was, it was, it was 
it was um sorry insightful it had a lot of lessons it was beautifully animated yeah it was fantastic yeah. it has jackie chan singing in mandarin <laughs> yes something i'm um i disappointed i kind of you know who would have been great in this movie Jack. jackie chan here and, i know you were you gonna say act? this stuff here we go go Anyone for it you could act uh, part of the issue might be as well as I think they did the movie both in English and in Mandarin, but I'm not a hundred percent. I like I I this I know this movie was like Disney was making with the Chinese market in mind. I love the original Mulan, and I see what they were going with this movie. But for me, um, I always expect you know some tweaks when they do the live action versions of their movies, and I know they want to move away from like the the original um one of the issues that i had of it though is that a lot of stuff kept reminding me of the original I'm like man you know what was better the version they did with the song I, 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 so you were you really wanted a musical is what you're telling me I really wanted a good maybe movie. Not but... even, maybe not even, but like my, my issue was is like the training montage and like them talking about like the, the kind of girl that they admire and stuff. It was way more entertaining. Um, if you're going to do a training montage, like the the whole time in the camp, for me, that's kind of like the highlight of the original movie. And for me, that was kind of the worst part of this movie for me. A training montage? Well, no, like the, their time in the training camp, because that's when they really had oh. character building and such. Uh, you said before the show was like, I, I can't remember any of their names. It's like, I can't remember any of their other characters. The only reason I know there were different characters ish is because they kind of rem they would say a line that I remembered from one of her just, you know, characters, like one of the characters within the original. But because you they were animated, they were more, you know distinct in their personality where everyone was just kind of the same like the i i agree with kyle where it's the acting wasn't sucked. great it sucked it sucked i wait mo most of them like i i can't they i couldn't tell you anything about them jet lee was in the movie he I was he was the like... emperor yeah he was the emperor that's sure who did sure yeah, Jet Li was uh, just... Jet Li played the Emperor. So this might be a weird thing to say, but I'm officially starting this theory that anytime Jet Li is an Emperor, the movie will fail. Mummy three, anyone? Ah. Oh man, that's sad. Um, well, so yeah, okay, like, so like... Um, we start off the movie where like you know Mulan is in her village and she is a rambunctious young girl. You know she's, she's energetic. She's a ninja, and she is being she is being told that she has to change the way she carries herself because, you know, she will never be a wife if she doesn't uh, if she doesn't she like has magic settle down. Yeah, <laughs> that, so that's, that's where I checked out right then and there is when she turned into Legolas from the Hobbit okay, and started okay. jumping around. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there because <laughs> because I'm gonna stop you right there because in Chinese culture. Your body and soul and your chi are like very important, okay? And you watch a show called Dragon Ball Z where everyone is like super yeah, powered and, and they use chi, okay? Show, not and the actual Mulan story Frozen, where she casting spirit bombs at people. There is a live reason. action. There is a live action Disney film where someone is literally like a beast, bro. Yeah. The thing is, if you okay. want to take a realistic Mulan, give me a realistic Mulan. They, like they they took out like you know fantastical things from the original, like Mushu, but then they added in the force. the phoenix, the the, the force, and the phoenix. The phoenix is just there for. There's a phoenix, I guess. So <laughs> this phoenix I, I, show it doesn't do anything. Just is like hi and phoenix. And it's like I. Die, Phoenix. You didn't. You didn't do it. Uh, Andrew, in in, in ancient Chinese culture, a there's the phoenix that's there. It's sacred to the the people, or all that. No, uh, it, it, you know, it didn't do. factor into the story whatsoever. At all. Uh, right. the, the phoenix. So, I, I'm just going to go on a little bit of a side tangent. Um, the whole thing about Mulan in the animated movie, her sacrifice or disguising herself as a boy was a sacrifice 
because she couldn't fight. She had to learn. You're saying she's a ninja? That takes away the sacrifice. She can already fight. Yeah, she and does, that... like, crazy backflips and, like... So and where's she... her character development? Oh, she, she can also slow fall. Know. Yeah, Barabbas. she can actually, like, control gravity and slow fall to the ground. Yeah, yeah no. Char- and kick arrows out of midair. Yeah, see, Mulan's <laughs> character development was starting from nothing and growing. No, and, this is, like, and Luke Rob- Skywalker starting with his lightsaber. And, and so Rob- this... That- Hold on, Rob. Wait. I'm going to stop you right there because the point of this film is uh, you have to be true to who you are. But you Mulan can still grow to... as a character. Yeah, she does grow as a character. She accepts who she actually is at the end of it. Like, that's the whole point. I'm not just talking about external. I'm talking about, like, it's... It would, do you remember the um, training montage when Mulan's like getting her bucket, but when she finally reaches the top of the tower, how good that did that feel in the story? So she's here in this champ. story, so in this story, she's not a champion. She is not. She's um... regressing herself. She is hiding who she actually is. So she struggles along with the rest of everyone because she's not using her chi. She's not being who she truly is. And when she finally gets the freedom to be who she is, then she excels. There is yeah. no logical story reason why she's hiding how good of a fighter she is when she's disguising herself as a boy. And that, that thing's the, the, what Rob pointed out is because she starts off the best fighter and perfectly amazing, the, like a big chunk of the story no longer works. And that is the training scene. Like I said, my favorite part of the original movie was their time in campment and in training and stuff because that's when they formed their bond as you know soldiers and as friends amongst each other and stuff with this one and with this one like i they have her character so closed off from everyone because she's not she mulan starts off as the worst in the animated series oh and in the animated movie and then she, you know, works hard and, you know, and works harder than everyone else, earns everyone's respect by becoming the best, by just trying harder than everyone else. When it's, I have all of the power in the world, but I can't show it. Because uh, when I was, you know, presenting as female, I was told not to do that. But now that I'm a boy, for some reason, I'm pretending I can't fight. I, it, it, it it impacted the story for me where like the whole middle of that um, story was just like, I was pretty checked out for it. And it's because that she doesn't improve. She's the best, but she can't tell everyone she's the best until she's can. See, I I've noticed this running trend that kind of is really, really hurting Disney movies. In my opinion, the live action ones, Mm -hmm. they make their female characters perfect from the get go. Every, animated Disney princess and character starts with flaws and improves by the end. Like, um, let's look at Belle. Belle in the original was super socially awkward. She didn't interact with people. She didn't do anything. But in this one, she's a social butterfly and everyone loves her and they're jealous and look how smart she is. Also, Emma Watson can't sing as well as everyone else could sing in that movie. There was uh but like uh, but w- with Mulan like I still think the action scenes were cool I-, I I think like that part of it was fun and there were things that I liked about it uh one of the th- one of the changes I actually did like is the the avalanche scene where she you know causes an avalanche that ends up taking out the Hun army mm-hmm I like the idea of like instead of her uh, her just grabbing and just having inspiration to fire a rocket at the thing that she actually. Oh, I think we lost. Oh, whoa! Andrew's lagging a bit, and now he's muted. Are you sure? <laughs> hey, but hey, buddy, we can't hear you. Andrew, you're. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. There you go. There we go. Da, 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 da. Andrew's back. Okay. Da, da, da. So go back thirty seconds. I oh, oh, okay. So one of the things that I did like for the changes is the avalanche scene because in the animated one she just grabs a firework, fires it out the mountain, and then she kills hundreds of people. 
in this one, uh, she shows her intelligence by, you know, using uh, everyone else's helmets to trick the Huns into thinking their army is flanking from a different side with her just firing arrows behind a rock and then causes them to use their catapult on the mountain to cause the avalanche. So they become the makers of their own demise. I kind of mm -hmm. like change for it because it, it, it shows, you know, strategy and intelligence and such. And it's the, the first part of character growth that I actually see in her. Kyle's currently on Rotten Tomatoes reading some reviews. She's the chosen one, basically an East Asian Harry Potter, but instead of the boy who lived, she's the girl who lived as a boy for a couple weeks. And that's that's one of the things that's really lost within the story as well that was within Mulan was uh, gender bending was a theme that was carried throughout the animated you know movie as Mulan disguised herself as a man to be able to you know take her father's place. Part of the climax was is that they didn't find out uh, the Hun leader was heading towards the castle and was going to you know do this big assassination at the end. They had thought they had won already. And he had, you know, survived the avalanche and he sneaks in and does it sneakily. And they have to disguise themselves as, you know, as girls to sneak into the palace. Yeah. And so they have, you know, that that flip where it wasn't just, you know, Mulan calling, you know, you know, disguising stuff as, you know, a male and presenting male to call upon strength and stuff. They also showed strength within femininity with the, the boys also doing that's cut out completely. And I'm pretty sure that's done just to appeal for chinese approval sensors where uh wasn't that a big part of this it's like probably it, of... it was made for china and that's one thing as well um megan, megan pointed out like they, they changed all the names and i can't if they had characters i could probably remember their names i do think it's a good idea they changed mulan's name because in the original it was kind of racist she was paying in the original and it's like, okay, you know what? Making her uh Hua Jun is a better choice. But also the reveal. Uh she just decides to just stop hiding because like there there's no real there's no real event that you know that prefaces her taking off her armor and you know revealing herself as a woman because she was able to show that she could still use chi in the training camp just fine within the animated movie she is exposed it, it's you know after the avalanche you know like they, they find out and then you know that's the, the big liar revealed moment but this one she's like i can use chi and i'm a woman because they're like ah person who saved us all and such and is our best fighter no, I guess. <laughs> but no, also, she was, I am she, Spartacus. No, I yeah, am Spartacus. No, I, am Spartacus. I believe Wong Wan. So she uh, had to come to terms, and that's what was like her terms her like what? reveal. The terms that she was the who most she is. Powerful being. Yes. That she's kind of god. Ah, oh, I have to I have to come to terms with me just being the best. I guess I'm just the best. Okay, so there's a character that we didn't touch on quite yet. There's a new character. So instead of um, uh, the villain being just one singular person, now there are two villains. There is a woman who also has Chi, who is like a witch. So they can transform into the hawk that the original um, the, the original villain had like on you, yeah. their shoulder all the time. And then we had like the the male villain who was like the powerhouse so this this woman um she confronts mulan she knows who she is like she just can i guess like sense it or whatever but anyways and she's like you will never excel hiding who you are and there's like a lot of tender there's like a, a later on like a tender moment between them where she is like confessing kind of how she feels being who she is because she'll never be accepted etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's a big thing in this movie is you're not going to be accepted if uh, if you act out of turn and that's what she's doing is she is she was hiding herself she was hiding her chi so she wouldn't be acting out of turn 
She was trying to blend they in. They never established her... why it's a big deal that they have chi. Like, they, they, it's just a bad thing just because. There is no point in the movie. Oh, there's no they reason. To... It's like, hey, Milan, you're the best. And this chick can do magic. And that's bad. There is, there because... is no reason why a man can't have chi. Totally yeah, fine the, for the men to have chi, okay? But the women having chi, you can see it in this hawk girl character, this bird lady. She is vilified for having her chi because she's not supposed to have it. She ca she's she's acting out of turn. But they never show her being vilified. She's introduced as a villain, continues to be she, a yeah, villain, she until villain. she's just suddenly not at the end. She's just, ah, you know what? You know what? Maybe not. She like, sacrifices it, 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 herself for Mulan, which was a big why? character thing for her. Why? Because Why? she wanted, because maybe she was like, felt like Mulan was the only no, 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 person no, no. who accepted but, but, her. I don't know. Right I don't know. But that, that's the thing is we don't know. That just randomly she, at the end, she just sacrifices herself. You're like, oh, I guess she turned beautiful. good at the end just because. It doesn't make, like, there, there is no point where she actually has any character arc. She's introduced as a villain, does a lot of cool special effects things, which again also makes it like, oh, why, why couldn't we have. Mushu, and then if we have a lady that changes into a hawk or a bunch of little birds and it swoops around a lot and is way more powerful than our actual villain from the last time but is also Darth Vader because they, <laughs> they 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 Kyle called it out as Star Wars and a hundred percent I, I wrote it that is. down <laughs> is the chi is treated like uh, you know kind of like the force which is it's sort the of the similar thing which is fine but then they go through the you know the motion of the witch going to Milan going, Ah, I see you have power to join me, and we will rule the galaxy as father and son. I mean witch and Mulan. M Mulan's story is literally just Ray, where she's like a nobody from Ray's two has random people. A personality. Does she though? Yes. Yeah, she's funny. She cracks jokes on a regular basis, at least. Like it's you at least see Ray have personality or at least have emotion. You, you know who never really had any emotion <laughs> throughout this entire thing? Uh, um... Yeah, um, it's another thing I've noticed in a lot of action movies. And this is, again, just me noticing. Uh, whenever they want to make a female character see more B.A., like B.A. Baracus, they try and pretty much go, well, she's stoic, so she doesn't show emotion because she's that tough and that... You can be a, a baff and still laugh at things, smile, crack a joke. Or cry, or, you know, feel vulnerable and, like, have a range of emotions. I didn't grow attached to any character because I didn't see any of them really. There was a up. moment where one of them, the like side characters, her friends or whatever, like dies in the hallway or fake dies in the hallway behind her. And like, I was watching that with Vic and I was like, did that care? Was that character important? Who is that? And they're like, Oh, that's like her, like one of her best friends from the training camp. And I was like, yeah, he nope. was the he was like the awkward soft boy. I know who <laughs> they are only because I watched the animated. I know who they're supposed to be. But if Do I'm taking it as just how they are presented, honestly, like the, the, they were all kind of the same ish. Like they didn't have as distinctive personalities from each other, and. Like a lot of their moments as well. Like I, I, I specifically didn't like when they started quoting um, a girl worth fighting for because all that all that did was remind me, like, man, you know what was a fun moment in the original movie? The the song of like the their dream girl that they'll be matched with when they're finally done the war and such. Uh, it's just kind of a passing conversation that's really awkward in this one. Hmm. And yeah, you know, like uh, one cheats a little bit one time and is expelled, and that's never followed up upon again. And because he was expelled, he was just gone. Yeah. Later. I I sure wish I knew anything about him, so I cared. <laughs> and you're banned. 
<laughs> and anyway, I'll, I'll, yeah, I guess. Derek? I'll, I'll, I guess he's Derek gone. Today? No, Derek was banned yesterday. Oh. Who's Derek? Well, uh, but at least it makes sense with Jet Li as the emperor because, like, uh, the, the, the big climax, it was cool, but then there were moments I'm just, what? Yo, when she kicked an arrow out of the air, like, stopped it in the air, spun it around, Not and kicked key. it back. She can use force. I'm okay with, uh, with, I'm okay with epic soccer arrow kick. Uh, and I think is I, I'm even okay. I think the scene with them bouncing in the construction site across the wood, I, I think that was cool. And they also got their Disney fall death. You know, Disney villains fall to their death a lot. Always. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's because as far as I can tell, it's the least graphic one hundred percent death debt you could do. Oh, but he doesn't die right away. Oh except for Oogie Boogie who was literally unraveled and then squashed to death. Yeah, yeah, unraveled and his skin came, you know, undone and, and I was trying to think of like which Disney characters actually have like a body count and I was like, Well of course there's Mulan. And then I was like, oh my gosh, is Jack Skellington the only other Disney character like with an actual body count? Oh, oh there is very high body count. Ca- um, Game Theory actually has an entire episode dedicated to the most deaths within a Disney movie. And they, they go through it. Uh, Mulan, I think, is like third or fourth. There are a couple movies where... Oh, Who has wow. more of a kill count than Mulan? Oh, okay. The number one one is the one you never remember. Uh, dinosaur has the highest yep. kill count because all the dinosaurs die. <laughs> Three hundred seven thousand one hundred. Okay, but three. <laughs> okay, that's so. fair. Um, because like I'm thinking of like a singular character, like actually. There was one. I'm, I'm trying to remember who it was. The meteor. But there was... <laughs> the meteor. <laughs> meteor that ended the dinosaurs. His name was the meteor. <laughs> His name was Dave! Dave the I Meteor. Was, I think it was Atlantis. I think Atlantis has a higher body count. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Let's put heroes. But uh, th- I haven't... Uh, yeah, so like I said, w- like with the witch character, it felt like... So they want to introduce another strong female character that would be a mirror to Milan, but then she also, to me, doesn't feel like she actually has character development. She's introduced as a villain. She's a villain throughout the movie, except when she has a conversation at the end. It's like, ah, you know what? I guess I won't be a villain. It's like, I mean, oh, sometimes that's all it takes. Okay. Like, you know, you ever have like a conversation with someone who maybe changes you your mind about how you feel about friendship. yourself? No, it's oh. the power of friendship. You know what was like, lame? Changing the, it to the... the power of friendship <laughs> when you have an all powerful. She essentially leads the army. She's yeah. way more powerful. Like there, there is no reason for her to feel threatened by anybody. So I don't uh, get why she becomes good. It's like, ah, you know what? I get to be in charge. That's what I was expecting by the end of it. Because there's no reason that she just like, hey, you be know, in charge by the end. Mulan's got a point. You know, they're kind of like, you know. Remember when Disney accepting. villains were unapologetically evil and they were fun? <laughs> just make Sometimes. her evil. Sometimes you you don't need a complex and deep and moral fighting. You could just have evil. Maleficent was fun until Angela Jolie tried to make her good. Her I, name yeah. means evil. I, yeah, Sorry, that fun. one still bugs me. But uh, but I guess I get. Oh, well, I was saying. I guess it makes sense. Jet Li was the emperor because for some reason he just catches an arrow, like old eighty year old looking man. Just boop. He's like, oh well. Damn, how did he get kidnapped in the first place? He's, just, just he's strong with man. the force, man. Yeah, everyone's strong with the force here, the chi. Everyone's got the force. I know the, the blind guy from Rogue One was in there, too. I think... I think Johnny this would have... Was it yep. Johnny Yen? I think it was a big mistake to make Mulan... Bad? Yeah, well, just like, <laughs> super powerful. Like, it, it takes out, like, a big part of her. Like, they would have to change more of the story for it to work, which they're free to do. The problem is, is the new elements they introduced uh, kind of hurt the callbacks to the animated series, they ha- uh, the animated movie they had. At least how I... Something, something I will say is that we are all a product of our environment until we get out there and we change and we get to have experiences and we accept ourselves so that's kind of what i took away from this movie 
And you know what? If you are born with super you know, magical mega powers and you are the best ever, you just keep being the best ever and be the best. Don't need to grow. Just stop not being the best. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know what would have made this movie slap? If they uh, would have had uh, Stevie Murphy. Wonder and NSYNC do the... And Eddie Murphy. You know what really would have helped this movie? Eddie Murphy. If you're and gonna have And Jackie Chan. Hmm. Even the... Uh, like the character growth between uh uh the captain of her of her battalion and her like they don't have any sort of character chemistry like they did within the animated movie but then then again that that all happens in the camp scene because they wreck the camp scene it affects so much of the character for the rest of the movie yeah yeah, I'm just saying I'm mad at it. I just I'm mad realized. at Disney. Disney. <laughs> they tricked me. They tricked me. They tricked me. <laughs> campfire scenes can make a movie all the better. Look at the Power Rangers remake. That campfire scene was awesome. Because, you know, to give a hoot about your characters, oh, no. you got to give them characters. I didn't realize this was a Disney trope because uh, there was... Uh, Actually, I think I'm thinking of Atlantis. Uh, the reason I don't like Atlantis is that in their entirety of their character growth, it takes place within one campfire scene where they all just say, ah, this is who I am and this is my goal. Next person. And then... Do, do they sing the campfire song song? <laughs> There's no songs within that period hey, Kyle, of Disney, which is why I didn't like that go? part of Disney. Oh, the C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song? How's it going, Kevin? Oh, the C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. I like SpongeBob. <laughs> and I like I'm, I'm making like I don't want to make you feel bad and stuff because you are still allowed to like Mulan and stuff and take what you, you want from it and stuff. Um, as I was saying, a lot of my problems with it also are tainted because I was so attached to that original that a lot of my problems stem from me just comparing it back to what I think it should have been rather than yeah. what it was. You were able to take it for more of what it was and you had a better experience with the movie. I'm just able because, again, like I said, Mulan was a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed when I was younger. Like it wasn't a, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like I had never seen the animated movie. I had watched it plenty. It was one of my favorites, and like I could just, I guess, I like both of them as their own separate pieces of a full narrative that I think is really interesting. I just want disney to stop doing live action remakes i other than <laughs> the jungle book is the only one that i've enjoyed so far and uh and i i'm a, that one's at least more of a mixed bag because there are people that don't like it but with all of the uh, rob you named off maleficent i agree i didn't like that one beauty and the beast like there were things that i liked about it but in the end i there was more i wouldn't go back to it i'd always go back to the original and hey, Disney, just let John Favreau do everything. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, uh, I think what might help it is if they go farther away from the story, because just seeing pale imitations of their beautiful animated classics just kind of updated and made dirtier isn't working for me. And it like, dirty isn't Disney. Disney is not dirty. Disney is squeaky clean. And that's part of the fun of Disney. You know what people never talk about that I kind of want to rewatch? Mm. The first live action remake of The Jungle Book. Yeah, because that one was closer to the book. I know I had seen it, but I can't remember a thing about it. It's got a body count. Oh, ooh. Well. That's what I remember because I remember renting it as a kid and then going, Mommy, I'm scared. <laughs> But the other problem is, is that uh, Disney also has me at their altar, so uh, I think the next one that comes out is going to be The Little Mermaid, and I'm probably going to watch it still, <laughs> even yeah. though I'm dis I'm I'm disappointed every time. But I'm like, ah, oh, Disney, you know what? I'm going to try again. Ah, oh, Disney, you let me down again. But you know what? They made it all better because we're going to manifest Gadget Hack Crunch into our universe and having Andy Samberg and John Mulaney. That, that's 
for every problem that Disney creates, they give us uh, something that we can love. You know, with how like heart with like how like popular cottagecore and stuff is right now, they should really do a live action of Snow White. That's like, definitely. I think that would be come. fun. It would be like a really fun musical one that they could do. Like, there's so many good singers that they could choose. Like, just pick a Broadway singer at that point. Snow White and the Huntsman. They did. It sucked. Oh yeah. Oh no, dang. I, never mind. You know what? It was no, so. Boo! I, you know what, Megan? It was so bad we forgot it existed. And in fact, it dang. was so bad they kicked Snow White out of its sequel and just called it the Huntsman. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. They did. Oh, they no. did Kristen Bell in a movie, and she just did fish face for like an hour and a half. Just oh, whoops! My God, apple. Whoopsie! Oh my God, an apple though. Edward, oh, my I wanna, oh my God, uh, I'm so beautiful. I'm so no eye. And let man. me see your Kristen Stewart face. <laughs> Can I just show a little bit of your top teeth? Rob's got the idea. <laughs> Rob can I just well, Rob, Rob can just I'll, edit I'll my say, icon the, to look like that. Yeah, Rob, I'll be the bigger man. You definitely have the better Christian Stewart face. But on that note, <laughs> folks, we are going to wrap up the show here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you want to continue the conversation online, you can do so on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak or follow us on other social media on Twitter and Instagram. Kyle and Chris, have, of course, have been uh, streaming on their respective Twitch pages, twitch.tv slash frozenfire727 or Chris the Tripod. And we've been brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at LURadio.ca. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. I'm Kyle. And I'm Chris. And, and we're, we're your Thunder Geeks. Geeks. We'll see you next week. <laughs>